Hey guys, uh, is my audio on? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna adjust the volume a little bit. Every time I look into that direction and I'm speaking, it will be considerably lower because uh, the microphone is very uh, dicky about where I'm talking. I think it's still a bit too loud for me to hear myself. <clears throat> so, 5.2. Let's uh, forget some stuff. I'm not wearing a cap. It's because uh, I just woke up and I came from a shower and if I just smush a cap on this, it will, um, I don't know, do something nasty. So, at first I thought that let's look at all of the painting features that are new in 5.0. Then I saw this uh, download 3D assets, like it was, I'm gonna show right here. Also, for those of you who are not members and haven't seen this before, I now have a overhead camera and I am like ridiculous, ridiculously excited about this. Uh, so... Here, in Procreate 5.2, at least in this beta that I am in, there was this download assets, and once I press that, it takes quite a long time, because this package of 3D assets is quite huge. Uh, it downloaded these 3D assets, which are, I think, for me to try out the new 3D painting feature, and I think that was originally something that I was thinking that maybe I'm not going to do that since uh, I wanted to do a painting session. But when I downloaded these, I thought that like probably everybody here wants to see how the 3D painting works, including me. So we are going to dedicate the first portion of this uh, live stream to just like seeing how that works, if that's okay with you guys. And if you have any specific questions, um, let me know in the chat and I will do my best to answer those. This is like my second time of opening this um, program. So uh, don't assume that I know how every single feature works, but uh, I think this can is like the most exciting thing to paint because it has so many flat surfaces. <laughs> it's closest to a canvas. But I guess like this would be interesting challenge because there's no uh, horizontal edges to a composition if you were to paint this. Except if you think about all of the label stuff, which is a limit in real world. But let's say that this is something that I want to try. So... Let's start with the round brush. Kind of feels like... Wow, I just lost my... whole video element for some reason. I don't know what that is about. I think it's because of this position. When I went into the 3D mode for some reason, this... Uh... Okay, now I see what's happening. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, reacting differently with this... Um... OBS program. But since it's a vertical object, I think I can just arrange it like this. And if you want to see what I see on my screen, I can sometimes skip to this overhead view. And I think even that I can adjust so that you guys can see it a bit better. Okay. Look at me being all tech wizard. <laughs> this would have been way too confusing. I don't know why it's not showing the UI in this screen share, like it usually is. Uh, because uh, as you see on my screen, I can see the UI here. But when I'm streaming through uh, Zoom, this has never happened before in my previous live streams, but I can't see the UI elements anymore. 
I'm gonna open the brushes and it doesn't show those either. I'm just gonna go into overhead. Well, I'm glad that I have this because I didn't expect this to happen. Okay, so painting looks quite normal. I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a slight texture. I'm using the default round brush and I know that that doesn't have a texture. So I think this texture is the surface of this 3D material. But it looks like the specular reflection is only bringing out that texture in the painting, in the paint area. So I wonder if they have added a texture to the round brush, which would be kind of controversial if you ask me. <laughs> I always kind of like uh, assume that the round brush is the default one. No, I had taken round brush. This is the default one. Sorry, my bad. The color picking seems to work the same way, but when I'm color picking here and painting on it, uh, it is not looking like that color that I just color picked. Maybe it's because there's already like a lighting applied to this surface. So I am color picking the color the way that it uh, looks without the lighting. Let's go into the settings. There's a 3D tab, so 2D texture. This is new. Okay. Seems like I can also paint here. I guess color picking is a bit easier in this mode. But I can't see at all what I'm doing, so I guess this mode would be good for fixing small uh, areas that are difficult to paint in 3D because of uh, their shape. What is paint through mesh? I'm going to erase everything so that I can see what I'm doing. And I have paint through mesh enabled. I'm gonna check the other side. It doesn't seem like it's uh, painting on the other side of the mesh, so this is a complete mystery to me what that means. I think this edge right here is the edge of the surface in the 3D model, or it's the edge in the viewport. I'm gonna try it again so I can see if there's another edge that appears on this side. Yeah, so when you are painting on the edge of the object, it will just cut off the brush stroke abruptly. Which is probably what you would assume to happen. Okay, I'm gonna read some of the comments. <laughs> There's like a thousand things that people are saying. Sorry, like this is a bit new for me because I've never um, had this uh, UI disappearing thing happen in Procreate before. Um, Aisha is asking, so is the update out for all or not? No, this is a beta version of the upcoming update to Procreate, but it is coming for everybody and the updates are free. I wanna learn how to draw on Procreate, but it looks so overwhelming. You should do some of my beginner to advanced uh, tutorial video exercises. Or look at my uh, one brush technique video that is free on this channel, like do that. Would love to know if the animation assist still works in 3D. Yeah, that's a good question. I think I can open the animation assist. 
I think it should be here if it was here. I don't see animation assist anymore. I guess it would be like super cool to be able to animate on a 3D object. <laughs> uh, it's something that I haven't thought about before, but now that you mention it, I think it'd be like really cool to, uh, for example, paint animated pattern on clothing or something. Is it out? Not yet. I assume that it will be out quite soon. Last update, last big update that Procreate did near the end of the year was released, I think, in December. So I don't know how long it might take. So probably depending on how this uh, beta goes, that if they find a lot tons of bugs, then they will probably fix those before the release. Are you using an iPad Pro? Yes, I really want to start illustrating with a tablet, but don't know what to get. Well, um, hmm, depending on your budget, I guess. Uh, the normal iPad is great, but uh, if you have the budget for it, like the latest iPad always is the one that you can probably use the longest. Okay, I'm gonna go into Brush Studio. I'm first gonna duplicate, duplicate this and see what is new here. So right away I see that stabilization uh, seems new. There is stream like, like usual, but there is also stabilization. It seems to like even further smoothen out your brush strokes, which is great for somebody who is like as shaky handed as I am. So it's really easy to do this, like almost vector like shapes. I'm gonna crank it to full. Has anybody been using uh, Lazy Nesumi on PC? Because this feels very much similar. So. Uh, if I take out streamline, it seems like I'm dragging a rope and at the end of that rope there is like a weight that is drawing the line. Actually, I get, can't see that thing at all. Sorry. I don't know why that uh, wasn't updating. Okay, well, so streamline is the same as ever, but there is also this stabilization. And this mode kind of like drags the brush stroke with a delay. I know that you can see it uh, updating in real time, but uh, to describe how it feels, it feels like there depending on the almond slider that I put here, it feels like there is uh, just this leeway for me to make small micro jitters and it will kind of stabilize those out. It's a bit different from Streamline because Streamline doesn't have that feeling of delay in it. Sorry about the beast noises. Vivid just came out from a walk with uh, my boyfriend and she's having um, high energy mode <laughs> activated for some reason. Okay, uh, motion filtering. This seems to be also smoothing out. What is expression? I'd really love to have like a tool tip for these uh, brush settings because it has taken me so long 
to learn how to make brushes just because of all of the trial and error, but uh, they usually have pretty well documented stuff on their handbook that is um, For some reason, this camera view doesn't update right now. I'm gonna try and do it again. Okay. Now I at least see the brush studio. So. What was I saying? I completely lost my train of thought. Anyway, I, I guess it's better to just like try how uh, this thing works. Oh, there's a, also a 3D preview for this. But when you're making a 3D specific brush, I guess you can see how that works here. I'm sliding my finger on this uh, Test screen and it doesn't seem like I'm able to rotate this ball at all. But there's this materials tab that seems to have um, metallic. I can apparently put um, grain for the metallic source. Maybe that's a reflection. Let's try this because I think it's very visible. Okay, so it seems to... I can't really tell what this does because I don't see the reflection. It seems to be like just 2D projection of what I'm doing. I'm gonna hit done. And go and see how this looks in an actual 3D object. It seems to be painting those in a 3D perspective. If you look at this corner here, like the patterns are getting smaller. If I look at the metallicness, like it seems to be using that grain for uh, reflectiveness. So you can see that the darker parts are more specular than the lighter parts. I think I'm gonna try this. And then let's look at roughness. I think this is probably uh, the texture. No, this is actually the shininess. So if I have it all the way to the zero, you can see that the specular highlight here, it is kind of getting diffused. So how shiny you want your material to be, if you have it higher, then it will be less shiny. And it seems like you can put a uh, grain texture for that as well. Let's just quickly try this. I think that looks quite cool. I'm gonna try uh, my own brush and see how that looks uh, on this surface. Just to see a normal brush that hasn't been designed for a 3D. If 
it seems to work the same way that it does on canvas. By default, it looks like uh, it's uh, projecting a very matte surface. So I don't see the highlight at all when I'm rotating the can. It kind of disappears into the paint. The rotation is pretty simple. And when I'm using two fingers, I can move it around like this. So I, I think that's pretty much all there is to uh, know about 3D. Wow, what is this? I have no idea what I just did. The transform control turns everything white. This projection. I have no idea what this does. Oh, there's control points there. I think this is uh, bleeding the material of the other cap. If I go into the layer menu, I think it's better to look at that first to understand what is happening here. So in a 3D object, the layers are uh, grouped to the materials. So the lid is a separate texture in its own uh, group. And then the tab is also its own separate thing. I wonder if I put a new layer here, will it kind of isolate everything into this um, tab area. I'll try and paint it. Yes. I think that's pretty handy. You don't have to worry about edges. I choose the lid. That's pretty easy. The texture that left like some of the metal, metallic stuff to be visible there, it kind of looks like it's worn. Probably not, not safe to drink something that has like matte paint surface. And here's the can. And it looks like I can make new layers. I wonder if I can do a clipping mask using these. Yes. There's like some weird glitching happening. I'm using the clipping mask, but when I stop using it, it seems like the brush stroke works the same way. So it's probably these sort of things that Procreate is still ironing out before the release. But it's pretty cool to know that like all the normal workflows that you use for painting, they work for 3D painting as well. So you don't have to separately learn <laughs> a separate skill to do that. I'm gonna scroll back a bit because I'm pretty sure that I missed some of the uh, comments. Uh, 
somebody is saying it's just uh, do you need the newest iPad to use the 3D feature? Um, I'm pretty sure that the oldest ones don't support all the new features, but like they usually support like few generations back. Uh, if this uh, 5.2 is out in the future, so I have to buy another version of Procreate or will this be auto-updated -up to my current version? All updates so far have been free and you just automatically update to the new version. You probably have your iPad already set to do automatic updates, so it might be that you don't need to do absolutely anything for Procreate to like suddenly have these new features when you boot it up. Uh, they s s say you can apply to get uh, the beta Procreate. The applications will open November 13th. So this brush editor will let you create brushes and save them with the brush because this looks like some super detailed settings. Yeah, it's uh, the basic stuff. Mr. Mikko, is this uh, OB, OB, OBG J file or some other format? I think OBJ is uh, the format that they are supporting. Okay, um, I think I can start <laughs> to do some Painting. Let's look at uh, the painting stuff. I made some line art before this stream, but it's like very confusing why I can't see um, the UI. Well, also it stops <laughs> working for some reason. Yeah, it now it went completely blank. I'm gonna reconnect it. Let's use the overhead screen, it seems to be safer for this. Um, in the patch notes, it also says that there are some uh, new features to the palettes. So I'm going to look at that. Here's the cards. This cards feature is kind of showing the palette that you have selected in a new way. And it seems to be like automatically naming the colors uh, based on what color is in there. One thing that what I want to know is that can I change uh, 
the, these names because like for uh, palettes that would be super handy. Wow, it, it seems like I can. This is super handy because uh, when you are making palettes, like for example, naming the colors when you have three colors, like the local color, the highlight color and the shadow color, when you can name those and then you return to the same palette after years, then having those names can be like a very good way to understand what your palette is and what the purpose of those colors is. Let's uh, uh, look at this uh, list of updates. It says that there's also... You can view your layers as pages. Actions, canvas. gonna go into here hmm. what is this so page assist apparently seems to make a whole new way of looking at the screen I have the, another layer here on. So this is not the same as uh, animation workflow. It seems like if you have um, multiple different illustrations that you want to work on in the same file, then this way of looking at the layers will kind of isolate each layer to its own thing. And if I here make a new layer, then it will view it as a page. I can change them from here. I think I sometimes use uh, Procreate to do like presentations through screen share like this. And in those instances, this would be super handy because I'm always like shuffling with the layers because I'm isolating one layer to show one of my slides. I know that Procreate wasn't made for this purpose, but like for someone like me, this really helps, uh, especially when I'm doing like a online lecture or something. Somebody is asking how it is to live in Finland. Who would like to live in Scandinavia too? Yeah, it's uh, pretty chill, uh, literally, right now. Fall is really nice. Uh, did you import those 3D objects or were they pre-installed? Uh, these were provided uh, by Procreate. There was a download button right here when I opened the program. Um, I think I'm gonna do a painting session, but I'm gonna do that separately because um, I'm having issues with uh, the screen share in this. So I'm gonna do that in normal Procreate. But I think this is kind of covering all of the things that I find out <laughs> right now by opening the program the second time. So uh, this is going to be a very short live stream, but um, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one because I can start one right after this. 
and if you have uh, any more questions about the um, I'm gonna just put <laughs> if you have any more questions about this beta version then you can still ask them in the next live stream that I'm gonna start in a few seconds but just to make these on YouTube to two different streams I'm going to quit here and then restart a new stream okay uh, see you guys in a